Hey guys, it's Erin from F The Office and I am a virtual assistant. And as a VA, I work with tons of fast moving, high profile clients. And one of the tasks that I get asked to do most often is calendar management. I'm talking setting up meetings on behalf of my client, making sure their day runs smoothly, that there's no double bookings, and ensuring that they don't get burned out and go crazy because sometimes clients can have back-to-back -back meetings. Honestly, guys, I think calendar management is one of the cornerstones of being a virtual assistant if you work with clients. And that's because it's so crucial to keep their diaries straight. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to properly label a calendar event. By the end of this video, Video, you will be able to create an event for your client that's so crystal clear that there will be no follow-up questions. And I think you'll find that a standard way of labeling an event is a really great way to ensure that everybody's on the same page. And if you like the tip in this video, you might want to check out the course. It's perfectly tailored to virtual assistants who manage client calendars. And I'll talk about it more at the end of the video because we're gonna learn about the different parts of the calendar and how to keep it all uniform. Let's go through this together piece by piece. Let's open up a new event on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. So single click, double click, however you wanna open these details, I wanna make sure that you're looking at a Wednesday at 10 o'clock. And we're going to pretend that your client has said to you, I want to meet with my client Bob at Disneyland. In California. <laughs> so at 10 o'clock, we're going to set up a meeting with your client at Disneyland. Let's first start with the title. This is what I like to call how to label an event the correct way. Now, you will see different virtual assistants that you work with label things differently, but this is the way that I like to do it. And that's because it is consistent, it's very clear, so that no matter who is looking at the calendar, we're all on the same page. So if your client has said, let's set up a meeting, I would like you to type in meeting and then follow that with a colon. That indicates that your client knows exactly what this calendar detail is. So if they're looking at the client quickly, they won't mistake it for a phone call and they won't mistake it for a coffee. They'll know right off the bat that this is a meeting at 10 o'clock. Then I would like you to include full details. So if your client, uh, in this case, Paula, um, and you know, your client will have a last name. So let's just pretend for the purposes of this course that her last name is project. So I have meeting and then we go into with who we have the client to indicate that your client is meeting with somebody. You can either use a dash or you can include, uh, these two arrows. This is found on a us keyboard between the M and the question mark. Um, and then you'll type in who they're meeting with. So I think we mentioned that she wants to meet with Bob, uh, Bob Smith. And I like to add a whole other detail here. So we've got your meeting, what type of calendar event this is. I also like to add in parentheses after each person's name, the company that they're with. And that's because your client might not always know or remember who they're meeting with. They might see an invitation that comes up that says Bob and think, who the heck is Bob Smith? So rather than creating any additional confusion, I like to add in parentheses the company that they work for. In a real world event, when your client emails somebody, you can look at the person's email. So look at that third person's email and it might have their company name in it. So it might be Bob at um, apple.com or Bob at uh, microsoft.com, whatever company they're with. We're going to go ahead and pretend that Bob works at Apple. We're also going to pretend that uh, your client works at Microsoft. So to label an event properly, let's do a recap. We have first and foremost, the meeting type, whether it's a meeting, a coffee, a conference call, whatever it is, I want you to put that type here. Then we have who it's between. So we have your client's name, the company that you and your client work for, and who they're meeting with. And in this case, I made up Bob Smith, who works at Apple. It leaves very little room for confusion, which is exactly what you want. Now that we have these details together, we're going to come down here and we'll confirm that we have the correct date and the correct time. And you see here that if I were to actually click on this date, Google Calendar pops up a little calendar. And it's here that we can change the date if we need to. It's the same with the time. 
when you click on the time, you'll see different options. And you can scroll through and click the appropriate time that your client wants to have this particular meeting. But for this example, we're going to have them meet from 10 to 11. Oh, and it's the same here. You can also indicate how long you want the meeting to be. Now it's crucial that you put the time zone that the meeting has taken place in. And why is that? Well, if we were to pick a different time zone, the times would look completely different on your client's calendars. Go ahead and select the time zone that the meeting is taking place in. Next, we're going to add a location. And if you recall for this example, I mentioned that your client wanted to meet at Disneyland. Google does this really cool thing for you now, where if you type in something that's a known address, they'll pull it up for you right off the bat. You don't even need to look up the address. Of course, you are more than welcome to look up an address. We'll type in Disneyland address, California, and we can simply copy and paste the address here. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. And that clip that you just saw is actually from my course, which is now up on Udemy for virtual assistance. It is all about managing client calendars on Google Calendar. Now, my favorite part about the course on Udemy is that it's not just the what, it's also the how. And I share with you my strategies that I've learned over the last six years of being a virtual assistant that I use with my own clients. And these are strategies like how to integrate canned responses or how and why to add buffers to your client's calendar. I even include things like scripts to help you work faster and more efficiently with your own clients. So if you manage your client calendars or if you are new to Google Calendar or even if you are fairly well versed but you're looking for some strategies to help take your client management to the next level, then I recommend that you check out the course and I'll pop the link in the description below. Again, I'm Erin with F The Office, a place for virtual freelancers like you to get everything they need to kick ass online.